Yeah, welcome uh, at this afternoon. <laughs> I'm Roland. Um, I will talk to you about PTXDist. Uh, as my previous speaker already mentioned it, <laughs> I'm a systems integration hacker at uh, Pingotronix. We are uh, a small company in Hildesheim uh, near Hanover. If you've heard about it, yeah. So what is this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> So what is Petix? Uh, in one slide, uh, it's basically a build system, like uh, if you know Yocto or Open Embedded or Build Root or even Open WRT. So you put in things you want uh, on your platform, on your embedded device, and uh, then you wait some hours, and then you get an image out of it, which you can flash on your target. And uh, our building blocks are basically uh, GNU make. Uh, we, we do a lot of uh, dependency handling with it because it's basically built for this um, so we can reuse it. Um, we do the uh, dependency handling in kconfig uh, and uh, which also gives us a nice, um, a nice menu for the user to select the packages that you want and select the sub options and whatnot. Um, there is some uh, glue code in, in Bash and uh, AWK, um, which uh, handles the um, dependencies between uh, kconfig and make. So it basically transforms the um, kconfig symbols, uh, the dependencies from kconfig into uh, the GNU make uh, dependencies and uh, does some other things under the hood so you don't have to type so much. Yeah. Um, the first versions of PTX just go back to at least 2003. Um, that's the earliest version I could find. Uh, there are probably some older versions, uh, but I couldn't find those. Um, yeah, so it's basically older than, uh, I think, Build Root started in 2010, uh, and Yocto is... 2001. 2001? Oh, okay, then I'm wrongly informed. Uh, excuse me about that. <laughs> But, uh, well, uh, it's an old project, and uh, I think uh, it isn't known so much, so uh, basically that's what this talk is trying to change. <laughs> but now we do uh, mostly month, uh, monthly releases, so every, release, uh, every month there's a new release, and which is basically just uh, version bumps for packages, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, overall license for PTX tests and uh, all the recipes are GPL2, yeah. And uh, now we also have uh, this uh, shiny new logo since I think one year ago uh, because we're basically just a, a collection of recipes. We have this, uh, this cooking penguin <laughs> and uh, an online documentation which is generated from restructured text in Swings yeah. and you can read this online. Yeah, some statistics. Um, I did this for the, for the previous release. Uh, 2020.01 is already out, but uh, my slides uh, were prepared last month. So we have about 914 uh, target packages and 184 host packages. Uh, and um, we're also providing some uh, pre-built tool chains for about 18 plus minus platforms. <laughs> Uh, architectures like uh, mostly ARM, um, like ARM 4.4 and V7 are very big um, and of course uh, the 64-bit version of ARM and there are also some people using it on x86 but this is not the main focus and uh, of course uh, RISC-V and then some older power PC architectures, yeah. <laughs> um, I think the basic uh, thing which you got to see for uh, on the user interface side is this menu config. Um, you, we have uh, two big, I say two big, uh, but they're not very big, <laughs> uh, menu configs. Um, on the one hand, we have the menu config for your user space, uh, for your user land, which you can select, in which you can select all your um, target packages like, uh, I don't know, we have here shell and console tools, scripting languages like Python, for example, uh, 
networking tools, I don't know, IP tables, uh, NF tables, what you need, uh, disk and file utilities, communication, um, applications, well, everything that doesn't fit in the, into the other. <laughs> uh, editors like v, VM and Nano, um, test suites, web applications, Nginx, you name it, and uh, graphics and multimedia like Qt, Wayland, yeah, and Xorg still. <laughs> and on the other side, um, everything that's not user land, uh, like kernel and barebox, uh, sorry, bootloader, which is barebox <laughs> for us. <laughs> Uh, but you can also build, uh, of course, U-Boot and, um, I don't know, Opti is there in, in, in it. Um, basically, everything that's um, below the, the user land uh, is, uh, is selectable in this uh, platform config. So um, we have this bare metal side on the platform config side and uh, everything that's above it uh, in the menu config. Um, and this is also what a typical BSP looks like on the file level. Um, you have one folder configs, which you have here the PTX config, which is what gets selected in the menu config. And uh, this is basically the kconfig um, configuration for the, from which the menu is uh, generated. And uh, in it you have a platform so this is everything you select in the platform config. And um, in the platform, there are usually some other packages that are also using kconfig for their own uh, configuration, like, for example, here the kernel. You, I guess you have a kernel um, without the kernel. I don't know if everyone's ever, anyone's ever tried it, but maybe it's possible, I don't know. <laughs> But um, also the config for your bootloader, uh, which in this case is Bearbox. And um, yeah, that's basically everything in configs. And you have some rules, some package rules, if you want to build some custom software which is not already in PTXest, you can uh, generate uh, package rules in your BSP. And this is basically a .in file which contains the kconfig menu entry and the make file, which uh, handles everything about building the packages. Yeah, and then there's this fold in between here, project root. Uh, I will come to this later. This is basically everything which you want to overwrite, but I will say something about this later. Yeah, and the basic structure um, is, the basic idea is that your BSP uh, directory structure is uh, structured exactly like the ptxdist upstream structure. So we have the same structure in ptxdist um, when you install it. So everything that's not found here in your BSP is searched instead in the upstream ptxdist installation folder. So you can extend ptxdist however you want and use the same structure with it. Yeah, um, every package is built in stages. I guess you have this in other uh, build systems too. Um, yeah, it has a get stage, an extract stage, a prepare, a compile, an install, and a target install stage, and which basically the get stage fetches everything from, from the web. Um, and uh, then the extract stage uh, extracts the tarball, which you just fetched, and applies the local patches, which you maybe have in your BSP or in upstream PTX system. Uh, the prepare stage runs basically configure or CMake or meson or whatever build system your package uses. Uh, PTX list has already uh, support for many of those and I think it is fairly easy to provide support for other build systems too. Um, and we'll see uh, later how this uh, is handled in the in the rule file itself, in the Mac file for the package. It's basically just a variable you set. Yeah, and then the compile stage uh, basically just compiles the packages, uh, package uh, like it is normally used. Uh, the install stage installs it into an isolated directory, so um, many packages 
uh, install many files by default which you don't use or don't need on your target system. For example, if you build a, a Qt, then uh, you have a, a whole lot of libraries which you maybe don't want to install. So the next step is uh, this target install stage which uh, cherry picks um, a set of files uh, into your root file system or your uh, IPKG package later. And um, you can overwrite any one of those stages in your makefile rule, in your package makefile, uh, but you can also reuse a lot of them, which we see uh, just now. Uh, oh, no, uh, just a quick information how to apply patches. <laughs> Um, you put your patch queue into um, a patches folder in your BSP or in the upstream PTX test uh, package structure if you're using uh, PTX test uh, in a development version. Um, and you name it like the, the uh, version and the name of your package, in this case, BuzzyBox uh, with a version number. And uh, there is the series file and the patch file, yeah. And uh, the usual... Um, the, the usual thing is that you uh, put packages for the, uh, which, um, sorry. The usual uh, thing is to put uh, patches for your packages which are from the platform config, like uh, the kernel or the bootloader or anything else in this area, um, into um, um, this uh, configs uh, slash platform folder. Yeah, but you can also put it in, in there and have it for all the platforms which you want. So um, you can edit this, uh, this patch stack uh, by using quilt or git after extracting the package and then changing to the package directory where it's extracted. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is what I wanted to tell, uh, how a package looks like in the inside. This is basically the, the um, menu section for the package. You just give a section uh, in which of these one you want to uh, want to have it. Uh, project specific is the default section, which uh, is uh, just uh, here. And um, then you select uh, basically the, the dependencies that your package uses, like in this case, libusb. So libusb gets built before your package gets built, so all the headers are found and so on. And also, in this case, because we're using CMake in this example, you also have to select the CMake host tool, uh, so PDX test can build your package. <laughs> yeah, and every package uh, is a tri-state option, um, so you can set it to yes, no, or uh, module, which you can see, uh, which we'll see later what th that does. Then we have the make file. Uh, as I said, it's a lot of assigning variables uh, like the version number and the MD5 for the downloaded package version for this URL and the source where it gets extracted and uh, the license files. Um, and uh, the license files uh, are really cool because uh, PTXist can uh, put them all together in one big PDF so you have kind of a report about all the licenses you're using in your package, yeah, in, in your uh, image. Um, and if you're using the default tools like CMake or Automake, you often don't really have to do a lot of this and uh, can reuse all the internal PTX test uh, functionality to build it. So the next steps are really short and reuse everything except the prepare and the target install stage. Uh, and in the prepare stage, we are also only setting this uh, config tool variable to CMake and we are setting these uh, config options for the CMake uh, to maybe enable our USB functionality. Uh, but this depends, of course, on the package you're using. And then in the target install stage, we uh, set up our variables for the IPKG package, which uh, gets built later, and uh, basically we're then only copying, oh, here should be a file name. <laughs> which I missed in the example, um, but uh, yes. This is the cherry picking part. 
And we have three package types. As I already said, we have target packages which are get installed on the hosts, like SMD, BusyBox, Core Utils, whatever. And uh, the host packages are only there for uh, having a compatible build environment. So we try to support most of the Linux uh, distributions that are out, out there. I think the, the earliest is uh, something like CentOS 6, six yes. Um, which doesn't have an up-to-date core utils, so we have to build the core utils ourselves, so all the packages which are using, I don't know, tar with dash dash uh, m time versions or something <laughs> can do that. Yeah, and the third part is image packages, um, which are also from the platform config, and you can decide there what kind of images you want to build. So um, I will talk about layering a bit. So Ptx just started um, up with platforms. Uh, so platforms are the oldest mechanism to layer things on top of each other, but there are five different others. Uh, we'll start with platforms. Um, in this example, I'm maybe using a platform for Raspberry Pi. So I have a kernel uh, with a version 4.19. I built an HD image for it, and uh, the Raspberry Pi needs a, a boot partition for the bootloader. So I enable this, and uh, um, because it already has a bootloader internally, I uh, don't build a bare box for it. And in the user land, I, in this example, I built a systemd, a busy box, and a cups. And if I now want to extend this support to other platforms, I can just build uh, add another platform. Like, for example, a platform containing um, ARM v7a and ARM 64-bit v8. And I can uh, choose different kernel versions here. And with this also maybe a different patch stack if your, um, if your platform support is not good enough <laughs> upstream. And I can choose different images which I need um, and uh, maybe a bootloader, another bootloader like in the other platforms. And I talked about um, that packages are uh, tri-state options in kconfig. So you can set these options to maybe M, so modular. And um, maybe you want to uh, have a debug collection, software um, collection that uh, doesn't get installed by default on uh, a user's or a customer's uh, target, but you still want to be able to debug uh, some packages in your uh, system. So you set these, these debug packages to M and then choose them at a later step in a collection config file. And in the debug collection, you enable them. And maybe in the release collection, you don't enable them. Yeah. These are collections. Then we have alternative config files, as I said before. Um, we had this, this additional folder here, project root. And here are two config files, Everstep and Shadow in ETC. And um, you can use this with uh, packages that are using this install alternative macro in their target install stage. For example, in this um, example uh, for CUPS, CUPS is installing the ETC print cap file. And um, you can overwrite this by any one of these locations. So uh, first uh, locally in your BSP, then uh, it gets searched uh, further up. Uh, then in the project root uh, directory from the PTX test installer, and then in the CUPS installer, and then in the CUPS build tier. So you have a lot of options to overwrite uh, config um, files uh, for different configurations. A new mechanism uh, which exists about a year now is kconfig -K divs, um, which is basically uh, just uh, divs on, simple divs on kconfig files. Um, um, if you are using um, a custom uh, kernel image, for example, you want to have some debug symbols in there, you set the config file to something like kconfig debug, um, which is living in the platform config as earlier. 
but um, you tell PTX this uh, ref config uh, variable, and this points to another kernel config in this case. And uh, then internally, PTX just computes the diff between what you select in this k config file and this k config file. So you uh, do a many config for your kernel debug, and then enable these three symbols, and uh, these two symbols later get uh, written into the, uh, the k config diff. And uh, at the first stage, uh, the first line is an MD5 sum of the ref config, in, so PTX just knows when to uh, recalculate this diff. And kconfig diffs are also the, uh, one of the uh, building blocks for base layers. So uh, as I said before, we had this idea to have the same structure in our BSP, like in, in the upstream PTX dist installation folder, and uh, extend locally where we need it, but we have a better idea, and all com problems on computer science can be solved by another level of indirection, so we use recursion. In this case, we have one BSP, which is a whole BSP by itself. It has the same structure as before, and we want to layer our BSP on top of it, so all we have to do is just create a link named base to this upper or lower layer in this case, and uh, everything you now select in the PTX config is calculated as a diff to this PTX config uh, on the district layer, and you can enhance your, uh, your BSP in relation to the uh, lower layer by um, adding rules, for example. And this is great if you don't want to share all your rules in one layer. For example, your customer only gets an open source layer, uh, gives you only an open source layer, and wants to layer their own proprietary software on top of it. And this is one way you can do it. Uh, some more goodies which got uh, added in the last stage. There is now a, um, a command to give uh, information about one package uh, and one to give information about UBSP. And uh, as I already mentioned, is the license report, uh, which basically uh, collects all the information from the kernel, uh, from, from the package recipes and dumps them into one big PDF and also extracts all the, the uh, copyright files. Yeah. Uh, if you want to try this out, uh, you can have a look at DistroKit. Uh, which is a pre-configured BSP for a variety of dev boards like Nitrogen 6 or uh, even the Raspberry Pi, some versions of it, not the 4 version, sadly. <laughs> and uh, you can also use an QEMO if you want. Yeah. Um, short things about contribution. Um, you can patch, send patches. Uh, patches are welcome. Um, currently, about 85% of patches are in-house. <laughs> But uh, maybe the changes, <laughs> yeah. So are there questions? Um. So the my package example that you showed us has um, a USB in the in the prepare yeah. section. It has a dash D USB on. What um, what would you suggest if I want to have that configurable? Um, you can add another K config symbol, which is dependent on the onto the top symbol. Um, so you basically extend this. This symbol by another sub symbol, called, like uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, you can uh, switch it on and off, and then you can use a macro here, which just uh, looks if this kconfig symbol is switched on and off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And is this is this something that is uh, halfway common in yeah, yeah. in the package? I just used a simple example here, but this mm -hmm. is really common. And also for for controlling what dependencies 
yeah. my package right. will pull in. in. In the cups example, which I showed here, you can build cups with uh, many different uh, dependencies like PNG support or what not. <laughs> yeah. And f is that, does that have to be then set per package in the PTX config? Yeah, this is also written to the PTX config because it is in the menu, so it gets written into the PTX yes, config. Yes, but does it, has to be, does it have to be configured per package? Or is there, is there some, some, uh, some standardization on, these, on the naming, let's say, of these sub-options um, sub so that I can set them globally for the whole image in one place? Yeah, this is usually for the whole image, yes. Okay. Okay. Then I think the time is up. Thank you. <laughs>